Cities currently consume 60 to 80% of natural resources globally. They produce 50% of global waste and 75% of greenhouse gas emissions. 70% of the global population will live in cities by 2050. Thus, urban resource consumption will continue to increase. The hinterland supporting cities, producing resources consumed by cities and processing urban waste will also grow. It is likely that the global urban footprint will triple by 2030. Addressing urban resource consumption, land, water, energy and materials is critical for future generations. Resource consumption also has wider environmental impacts. Consuming resources generates waste, greenhouse gas emissions and pollutants. It may also result in the consumption of agriculturally productive land surrounding cities. This may produce urban heating, flooding, water scarcity, food scarcity, air and water pollution problems. In social and economic terms, it can also create resource scarcity issues, reduce economic investment due to the increased risk, health problems, and also problems of affordability for those living in cities. Resource battle could be won or lost in cities. Cities are centres of investment and innovation. They can act autonomously to address the resource problem. But the question is how to reduce the consumption of land, water, energy and materials in cities. This must be achieved by adopting a circular approach to the management of resources. The principal goal of adopting a circular approach within a city region is to reduce resource consumption and waste production. It is also to ensure the long-term sustainability of the city region's natural ecosystem and urban infrastructure. This can be achieved by adopting one or a combination of circular strategies. There are seven strategies. One, optimization. Optimizing the use of resources through the use of efficient technologies and addressing resource redundancies within the urban system is essential for the overall reduction in resource throughput in urban systems. This is fundamental for the delivery of circular cities. Two, localize. By localising resource flows and activities within the city region, we can reduce the energy consumed and emissions produced in the transportation of people and resources. Three, looping. By closing resource loops through recycling, refurbishing, recovery, reusing resources within the city region, we can reduce resource consumption and waste production. Four, substitution. By substituting non-renewable resources with renewable resources in the supply chain, resource-based activities with service-based activities, and physical with virtual activities, we can also reduce the fossil fuel energy consumption, land and materials consumed by the city. Five, share. By sharing resources in cities, by swapping, exchanging, collective purchasing, collective consumption, shared ownership and so on, we can reduce resource consumption. Six, adapt. By creating an urban fabric, infrastructure, buildings and spaces, which can adapt to the changing demands placed on the city over time, we can avoid technological lock-in and the wasting of resources in the city. Seven, regenerate. Using blue green infrastructure in the city, we can regenerate natural capital through the provision of support services, nutrient cycling and soil production, production services, for example, the production of energy and food within city regions, or regulating services, for example, carbon sequestration, climate regulation, hydrological reg regulation, air purification within cities. So a circular city could adapt to changing lifestyles. It could produce resources locally to be sold locally, perhaps supported by a local currency. Integrate green and blue infrastructure into the urban fabric to help regenerate the urban ecosystem. Adopt sharing schemes, for example, car sharing, co-housing, peer-to-peer lending. Reuse infrastructure, for example, through the construction of flexible buildings. Or reuse land through the designation of pop-up spaces where new circular development trajectories can be tested. 
encourage the recycling of organic waste into biofuel for the use in space heating and public transport. The Circular City Hub brings together academics, practitioners and policy makers working in the fields relevant to design, implementation, governance and management of circular cities. It provides the interface between academics and key urban stakeholders, enabling cutting edge research to impact directly on the delivery of circular cities. If you would like to learn more, then please visit our website or join us at the Circular Cities Research Hub group on LinkedIn, or alternatively contact us directly. The future is circular.